Hello everybody, this is Supreme Decisions and you're listening to the Supreme Decisions Legal Minute Podcast. Now, everybody that's been following has noticed that I've gone into an angle of going into the Supreme Brady list for the most part. The reason being is because I told you we're going to go into a to a period where we're going to weaponize your defense. And part of that weaponization is going after the first cog in the machine. And the way we're going to do that is through the Brady list. Because you have the right to confront your accusers. And like I said, the first cog in the machine is our first introduction to our current policing system. Now, I'm going to give you a couple viewpoints today. Because this one is going to be in parts. Going to be a few pieces. Not going to be a very long podcast. Well, at least not today. But I'm going to give you nuggets that you can take with you, kind of digest, and get prepared for the next steps in the series. Because everything that I'm doing now is going to be about the cognitive reach of our own minds. Because now this is the red pill portion of everything that I'm teaching. Because if you're not prepared to actually look at the actual the situation as it actually is, this is the time to stop following. This is the time to not support. This is the time to go on and blue peel it up, go back to your regular lives. Because this is where it gets deep. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is all, come up with about 90 other colloquialisms that actually make you feel good. But this is where I start to open your eyes to what's really going on and how it really affects us. And again, today, this is just a part one. And actually, I should just call this a red pill portion of the Brady List spot. Let's call it that. The red pill portion of the Brady List spot. Because the Brady List is simply the impeachment evidence in police personnel files and the battle with the prosecutorial team. What do I mean by that? Well, remember I told you police have a choice. You know, exercising free will when they choose to bring you a part of that system by making an arrest, by making a stop, even by introducing themselves to you. They are becoming part of that They're introducing you to that system. It's their choice. The prosecutor then is handed information from that police officer who made a choice to then choose to follow up on that police officer's choice. Notice two people with choice. They're choosing. So therefore, those two guys are on the same team. Notice You haven't teamed up with either one of them, but they're partnering together against you. Now, let's go into it. The Brady Doctrine requires prosecutors to disclose favorable material evidence to the defense. Now, what does the Brady, I guess the Brady list consist of? Basically, police personnel files, not personal personnel. There's a different end in that one. There's another end. So understand that. These files contain valuable evidence of police misconduct that can be used to attack an officer's credibility on the witness stand and can make the difference between acquittal and conviction. I'm going to say that one more time because most of us don't even understand that we have access to that information because I'm even going to put up a Georgia attorney who told a client a bold-faced lie when he told her to ask for the police personnel records. You know, the thing or the person who made the choice to make him part of the system. She thought, oh, you can't ask for that. But yet, whenever she was confronted on the phone with myself and him, she admitted that she lied. And she then made the request. And she worked with the prosecution to bully him into a plea. Note what I just said. 
the defense attorney worked with the prosecution to bully her client, the defendant, into a plea so the prosecution can get a win. I'll get deeper into that because, again, when we're weaponizing our defense, the enemy of my enemy is not my friend. It's just a tool I use to destroy them both. Understand that always. The enemy of my enemy is not my friend. The enemy of my enemy is a tool. And as long as you keep everything in those aspects, you have an opportunity to win. Because it's only the usage of your tools which makes them effective. But I'm going to read that one more time. Because again, the purpose of the Brady List is to get at police personnel files. The context of those police personnel files are those files containing valuable evidence of police misconduct that can be used to attack the officer's credibility on the witness stand and can make the difference between an acquittal and a conviction. Because, I'm going to say this a bunch of times during this short podcast, you have the right to confront your accusers. And your first accuser is the person that made a willful choice to bring you part of the justice system. Guess what you have a right to do? Confront them. You get to attack their character. Why? Because they chose to put their character on trial by choosing to make you part of their system. Every conversation, they're making a conscious choice. Who are you not to accept it and then put it on front street for them? Because if you had not spoken to me, had you had not had this encounter with me, we wouldn't be here. Because I even had a police officer when I was suing him one time. It was, it was almost hilarious. Because the word irony, did it was the most hilarious thing I'd ever seen in my life. I'm holding my wife's hand, holding my son. Police officer comes out of the courtroom. He yells, why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? I have a wife and kids. While I'm holding my wife's hand and holding one of my children. He asked me why was I doing that to him? Because he has a wife. He has children. My response was easy. Because you didn't give a shit about my wife or my children. The enemy of my enemy is not my friend. It is a tool I use to destroy them both. Always understand that. Because they don't care anything about you until they realize that the system itself does not care about them. Always understand that. They think they have the protection of the system. When in fact, the system does not care about them either. I've even given you videos of that. So for all the police officers or the police apologists that don't like what I just said, go back. Listen to the podcast. I spoke about how the police unions make sure that police officers don't have access to mental health. How they spend the least amount of money on police officer mental health. They spend the most money on officers that are violent, destructive, and causing the most chaos. And again, those weren't my reports. I was just reading them. And where'd they come from? Police officers. Let that sink in. Now, what happens when you're doing this? Because again, the context of the Brady is right here. Critical impeachment evidence is routinely and systematically suppressed as a result of state laws and local police policies that limit access to those personnel files. I'm going to say that one more time. I'm going to say, I'm guarantee critical impeachment evidence is routinely and systematically suppressed. Remember I talked about, I just, I literally just said it. Had a young man that, hey, I'm going to hire you as a consultant. I have an attorney. I want to hire you as a consultant. Makes a request to his attorney. His attorney tells him, no, we can't do that. Nope, nope, we can't do that. That's illegal. Nope. 
until she was confronted with the actual laws of her state, which is Georgia. Then she admitted she lied to him. So even the defense is helping the prosecutor suppress. Because even I'm going to show you one here in El Paso. Oh, well, no, you can't, you can't look at that. Why would you rouse the prosecutor with that? Because that was what one of the Florida attorneys said. I'm going to show you him too. These are defense attorneys. Why would you bother the prosecutor? Why are you why is the prosecutor bothering me? Because we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the cop and the prosecutor. You wouldn't have any money from me if it wasn't for the cop and the prosecutor. What do you mean? Why would I bother the prosecutor? The prosecutor asked for me to bother them. They need for me to bother them. They need for me to be there. They requested my <laughs> they requested my presence. And I must give it to them. Now, they may not like it. Not really my concern, because had they not bothered me, I would not have an opportunity to bother them. It is systematically suppressed, and as a result of state laws and local policies that limit access to these personnel files. Now, keep in mind, these are good people, right? They're doing the job the right way. But why would we not have access to their files? Why do they not want us to see them doing what they're doing? You know, all these things that we got questions on because we're told they're good people. We're told that they're professionals. Remember Officer Dingle? Yeah, I'll get into that again. But why we got all this hiding and suppressing? Why do we have all this lying and corruption? Because that's what it amounts to. Now, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you a case. I'll give you a context afterwards. I'm not going to go into the case. It's Young Blood v. West Virginia, 547 US 867 2006. Now, prosecutors and police officers form a cohesive prosecutorial team. The prosecutor has the means to discharge the government's Brady responsibility if he or she wishes. Sounds like another choice for the prosecutor. But notice what they use. They even use the word. The prosecutor and the police are a team. Prosecute, police, judge, defense attorney. Team, 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 team. And you. You're the fifth tier of that ring. Everybody else is voted in by you paid by you. Everybody else is there to supposedly serve you. But when I said you are the most powerful person in the courtroom, I had people upset. But I also told you you were the most powerful person in the courtroom because I also told you that the defense attorney doesn't do what you do, tell them to do because they are an employee because you're paying them. It is a violation of not only their oath, but also that bar card. Prosecutor is voted in by you. Police officers are fiduciaries. I actually read that to you. Judges voted in by you. So the judge serves you. People, remember that? We the people. Prosecutor, who do the prosecutor represent? The people. Prosecutor represents you. So why is it the prosecutor is choosing to not be on your team? Are they really representing you? We'll get into that. By putting in place procedures and regulations to bring forth information only known to the police. Because remember, I also gave you a case that states if the prosecutor chooses to bring forth a case where they're using the police as the crux of it, which, you know, the citation because the police are the ones that introduce themselves to you and choose to bring you in. The prosecutor is now responsible for all information, even if it is only known to police. Damn shame. Their rules screw them. Isn't that amazing? If you know them and you know how to enforce them. Because it's funny, because I have a lot of people that will call me and be like, yeah, I, if you do this, and you do that, and da 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 I'll be like, okay, great, how do you enforce that? And none of them know. 
That's the most amazing thing. But then they'll try to give me information. Or they'll, well, I'm just trying to educate you. you give me information that, one, is behind me. I have that. How do you enforce it? How do we move forward? I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna look over there. See, can we get to it? I just want to know. Can, can we get to it? I just, I, where we at? Ninety nine point nine percent of the time, that's a, I don't know. But I'm gonna give you information that you don't have. I'm where that information connects because not only do I know the procedure to get you there I know the procedures to enforce it this is the three little pigs because I understand how to build a house of bricks they can huff and they can puff but they can't change their words they can't change their laws they can't change their procedures because it's written. When you talk about the masonry acts of Ben Franklin, the pen is mightier than the sword, you understand the context of it. The pen is mightier than the sword. It is written. That's why when you ask for things that are signed, it becomes one of those, I don't know if I should give it to him. Because not only are you asking about the act, you're asking about the responsibility. I'm going to say that one more time. You're not only asking about the act, you're asking about the responsibility. And most people don't want the responsibility of being able to act in a manner in which is not something where they can't be held accountable for. Maryland v. Brady requires prosecutors to disclose favorable material evidence to the defense, including anything known to the prosecutor or any other of the prosecution, uh, excuse, prosecutional team, which will be the police. An epidemic and Brady violations have landed here in our system because We've accepted it as a willful bypass. We've accepted it because we believe that the people that say they are defending us are doing the things that they're saying. Because most of the people that defend us, that we're paying less than 50 k to, they're being fed by the state. So they're not going to bite the hand that feeds them. But we take their word that they're doing something. But when you ask them for proof or evidence of their actions, are your words matching your actions? That's the one thing. I Are your words matching your actions? Let me see the discovery request. If they have one, it's vague. And it's done that way purposely. Because we talk about the lack of specificity from police. Why are we not speaking about the same thing when we're talking about the things we want from police? Because the more specific, the less wiggle room they have. Because if I'm asked about a certain day, a certain location, a certain time, how much wiggle room does he have? But if I'm talking about a certain officer at some point or another, at some given month, the, where, where, where are we talking about? Because I can deny that because it's not specific. So why would a defense attorney write something that's not specific? I'll let you catch on to that later, but I want you to understand these are willful bypass of disclosure. These are the things where had I not been part of my partner's team, he would not have known that his attorney lied to him. She would have never admitted that she lied to him. But it was not only because it was brought up to her, it is now somebody that's an out-of-town shooter, somebody that's not part of her program, that's not in her club, that now has witness to what she's doing, so therefore they have somebody else to hold her accountable. 
Now, I'm going to speak about something later and it's going to be used in the terms of a magic bullet. In the context of most magic bullets, it is evidence of police misconduct contained in police personnel file. Now, why do I tell you to request this each and every time an officer, whatever officer, does this, right? Just whatever officer, I just want you to know, whatever officer making make the request on the personnel file. Because there was this guy named Derek Chauvin. Everybody was like, oh my God, Derek, Derek was not a bad guy. He was this, he was that, he was such a great dude. Then when you find out that he knew the person he murdered, Well, that guy used to do drugs. Oh, well, Derek also had another video doing the exact same thing to someone else that was not on drugs. Now, what's the excuse? Oh, by the way, Derek had four open cases in federal court where he was being held liable for doing the exact same thing that we watched him on video that people gave excuses for him doing. Oh, he also had internal disciplinary files that li that numbered up to 20. He couldn't follow Minnesota police officer rules. He violated constitutional rules at least five times. He had multiple disciplinary issues and write-ups. All of a sudden now, we don't want to talk about Derek Chauvin anymore. Because it's easy to defend someone when you don't want to accept what they are doing is wrong. I'm going to say that. When you don't want to accept what they're doing is wrong. Because when you go into requesting someone's Brady file, you're talking about all internal affairs reports, all disciplinary write-ups, all performance evaluations, all documenting a range of information that defendants can use to their advantage at trial, including civilian complaints, as well as lawsuits filed against them. Each one of these contain evidence of an officer's dishonesty. Evidence that can be critical in impeaching an officer's testimony. Now, I'm going to give you another case. Again, I'm giving you cases that you can go and kind of dig into. I'm not going to go into them at this point. Because again, like I said, today it's going to be a little quick. And this one is Kyles v. Whitley. 514 U.S. 419 1995. The great part about doing a Brady request, you can access these files without a court order. Now, meaning this can be done simply through discovery. This can be done simply through a freedom of information request. Because if you had contact with an officer and you got a warning, that officer has now opened himself up to character review. I'm going to say that one more time. If an officer makes contact with you, that officer has now opened himself up or herself up to character review. You can do a freedom of information request. That must be answered. I'm going to say that. That must be answered or it offers recourse to all those involved. If you choose to make that step. Now. The restrictions on access, in turn, result in the routine and systematic suppression of the Brady material. Because you remember I told you this can be done through discovery. I also talked about how defense attorneys that you pay less than 50000 to don't request it. Why is that? Aren't they working towards your innocence? Aren't they doing everything they can do? I paid them a $10,000 retainer. And you should have punched him in the face because he didn't do it the right way. Should have punched her in the face because she didn't do it the right way. Because she did not give a shit about you. Because understanding this, I'm not saying or throwing out a number just because. I'm doing this because you have an opportunity now to be better than you were. 
because now you understand how to move with your defense attorney if you choose to hire one. Because you can even go into things such as filing false overtime claims. This is something that's well known in New York and Los Angeles. Making false police reports. This is something I actually reported on in Indiana. And this is something I also talked about in Georgia. And convictions have been overturned and people have been released from death row basically from false police reports. I even spoke about, matter of fact, I'm getting ready to give you one, another one, like DJ Cat, another one, from Savannah. Because, you know, Savannah, Georgia, where Sonny Perdue, or was it uh, Nathan Deal, one of the two, I'll give it to you for show, executed a man that was knowing, they knew was innocent. They executed an innocent man because the police lied. The police then threatened the people that <laughs> re-threatened the people that allowed him to get off death row. But what's the number two finder? Police misconduct. Number one is ineffective assistance of counsel. Notice I keep using the word assistant because that's what it is. They are assisting you. They are not your voice. Now, the number two reason is for police misconduct. You find new evidence. All that goes up under the same thing. It's not necessarily legal error. It's the error of the people that are working for you. You know, first is your defense attorney. Second is the police officer. And even how we feel about any prosecutor, prosecutors in third. That's where the malicious prosecution comes in. Because they don't even realize the shit that they're doing is wrong. But I'm going to go into, because again, misconduct findings are so valuable because the police department's own assessment of the officer's credibility is what weighs on them. Because it's just like, that, that, that boy mama said that. That girl mama said that. This is somebody that works with you every day that's saying this. This is the person that you work for saying this. This is somebody that's close to you. It's not somebody that's guessing. It's somebody that has daily interaction with you. That's why the misconduct findings from police officers, from the police force, it's so valuable to you in your case. This is why it needs to be requested. This is why we're doing the Brady List. This is why we're making it supreme. Because we even did about the officers just the willfulness to actually lie. And it's almost comical because we talk about the good officers. We don't have a lot of reports on good officers. We say it's so minor. And I did a report about Minnesota, you know, where Derek Chauvin was where all of the police officers that were involved in the murder of that young man were found guilty. And I guarantee you, most of you didn't even know that. All of them were found guilty, not only in state court, which was kind of swept under the rug, but they were found guilty in federal court. All of them are in federal prison right now. All of them are in federal prison right now. Derek Chauvin is the only one serving life. Everybody else is serving 15 or less. But all of them were found guilty because their actions were not conducive with their oath of office. They violated their fiduciary duty to the people of Minnesota. Because as trash as Minnesota is, they have a duty to intervene. None of them did. Also, when I did the report of Minnesota bad police officer... 96% of all the officers that have retired in the last two years were bad officers. It was, I will, and I hate keep, it's like 305 retired, 296 of them were bad officers. But it's, you know, it's, it, it, it's a few. 305 retired, 296 are bad? Are you kidding me? We looked at a Buffalo precinct. They had 57 officers resign. And they only had 59 to begin with. Say, I'm, I'm going to say that. You had 57 bad police officers. Because it was not okay to bust open the head of a 63-year-old man and then step over. That was not breaking the law. I'm going to say that one more time. 60, 57 bad officers. 
out of a group of 59. And the other two officers, they didn't quit because they were fired. So where were the good officers in Buffalo? Don't worry, I'll wait. Because you can't be good, bust someone's head open, step over them, and call yourself a human being. Because you want to find out how someone actually feels about you. Because I'm going to go, again, this is something I'm going to go into as well. It's the systematic racism that we have in this country. Because it's easy to dehumanize someone. And then we work on the context of dehumanizing ourselves because we don't want to see anyone else as a human being. We want them to be replicas of something else instead of allowing them to be who they are. To be what they are. We want them to be us. We want them to think like us. We want them to feel like us. We... Unless we're a police officer, because then we believe that they're beneath us, yet we're the servant. Which is why when a police officer is given instructions without a crime, it is called a show of authority stop. Because a police officer is a servant until. But I'm supposed to understand because they create the danger in their job. When in fact... Being an Uber driver is more dangerous than being a police officer. Delivering pizza is more dangerous than being a police officer. But I don't ever hear anybody say, well, you got to understand, that's a dangerous job. Because we don't look at them as human. We have perceptions of what they should be. And these contexts that I'm giving you takes that shell away because I'm showing you they're human and they made a conscious choice to be a servant and I'm showing you the laws in which they must abide by because these are the laws they said they swore to God that they would enforce Properly. But whenever I give you the ideals of them having the ability to make mistakes, why do I get people that want to argue with me about that? Because they're human, right? And officers whose credibility is called into question by police misconduct may not be able to testify in future cases. But here's the great part about it. Whether it's called into question or not being able to be called in or should not be able to be called in are two separate things. A prosecutor will keep calling a known liar to the stand until somebody finds out that that police officer is a known liar. Because remember, that police officer and the prosecutor, they're on the same team. Because there's no liability on the prosecutor until... They disclose that this person is a known liar and then they put him on the stand. I'm going to say that one more time. Because there is no liability placed on the prosecutor. They're not accountable until they acknowledge that this cop is a known liar. Let that sink in. Just let that sink in. Because an officer who is a known liar cannot testify. That officer can't make arrests. Can't investigate cases can't conduct any other police work that might lead to the witness stand. Yet they do it because they're still out in the field. I've actually given you a couple. I'm going to give you another one in a couple of days. But Brady is a matter of a defendant's due process rights. I'm going to say that one more time. Brady request. In a discovery is a defendant's due process rights. Because a Brady application of a police file launching a campaign of litigation to pressure prosecutors and police chiefs. And I'm going to throw in one more. Police unions. Understand 
until they're pressured to do something. They're going to keep dangling one or two bad officers to, all right, well, that's the sacrificial lamb for the day. We're good for another six months. Oh, oh, oh that, there's no sacrificial lamb. All right, we're, we're good for another six months. And then we're going to silently keep all these other bad cops working. Why? Because 95% of people don't challenge them. And the 5% that do, 76% of them win. Absolutely pause for dramatic effect because I want you to understand. I want those numbers to resonate with you. Because if you're not challenging, if you're not listening, if you're not applying the things that I'm giving you, why are you here? Because remember, I'm doing this for the people that want to learn. I don't want you, you know what, I don't want you to just listen to me. I want you to hear me. I want you to hear Jimmy. A friend of mine told me, it's the passion in your voice that kind of soothes me at night. I was like, that's creepy, but I get it. Because I don't like listening to me. I don't. But the new shirts is actually, it's, it's, it's prolifically profound to me because it says, <laughs> forgive me, it's my passion talking. I'm giving you this information. God damn it. I'm giving you this information because it's my passion for you to have it. It's my purpose to give it to you. It's my being. It's what I have. This is what lives beyond me. Because this information was here before me, it'll be here after me, but no one will disseminate it the way I do. Because I need you to forgive me. It's my passion talking. And I want you to understand, if you don't like the passion, if you don't like the, the, the <laughs> I actually put up a post the other day, and it was funny, because it was, it was, I believe it was from Snowflake, or Snowfall, or whatever it is. And he turns around and said, I'll be damned if you're going, going to, let me, let me stop. So I'll be damned if I'm going to allow you to destroy what I built, because you don't like the way another nigga talking. And I said, that's for my kids. Because I've been told I talk to my children crazy. Because I love them. I speak to them more harsh than anyone else will. So anything that anybody else has to say to them, it's going to roll off their back. No one's going to be tougher to them than their dad. A lot of them, I don't like the way you talk. I don't care. Because I'm building this for you. A lot of you tell me, I don't like the way you talk to me. I, I don't care. I don't care that you don't like the way I talk to you. What I'm building for you is for you to win. If you don't like to win, then you don't want to talk to me. You're definitely not going to like the way I speak to you. Because I don't accept failure. I don't accept doubt. I don't accept losing. And if you want to lose, cool, get off the team. I'm good with that. Because I only want winners with me. That's why I give you the information. That's why it's my passion talking. That's why... <laughs> that's why I teach you about sniping. You don't need everybody, but you do need to make sure that you hit your target. That's where the discipline comes in. That's where the understanding, the application, the that's where the separation comes in. Because you can not like how I speak. That's cool. I get it. I don't like how I speak. I'm not going to change my speak. But I'm giving you this because weaponizing your defense is just that. I've never met anyone nice come talk to me, place a gun on the table, and we had a pleasant conversation. That conversation was violent. 
They introduce violence to it. Guess what the police are doing every time they come in, into your space? They're introducing a the gun to that situation. They're introducing violence to you. They're not coming caring about your child. They're not coming caring about your spouse. They're not coming caring about your job. They don't even give a shit about your tires. But they're there. And the people of the uniform that they put on don't even care about them. They'll tell them they do. We got the blue wall. I back the blue. Yet, every ethnicity has a different police blue. Each one of them have a different access to blue. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get into that. Because when you take them away from blue, they don't know how to respond or act. Because then they have to defend themselves. And that's not the act. You know, that will be suing them in their individual capacity. Because the second they violate constitutional rights, they breach their fiduciary duty. You know, through something known as officer negligence, which is the easy. They're no longer actors of the government. So you cannot sue them as officer so-and-so. They are now David so-and-so. But again, I, I'm giving you that nugget. Why? Because it's my passion talking. This is the red pill time. If you're not prepared to go this deep, take the blue pill, cut this off, and go listen to some slow jazz. Because this is where we're going to go to some, we're going to get into some new. But right now, you know what, let me, let me go ahead, because, yeah, let me go ahead and finish this. I want to give, because critical Impeachment evidence is routinely and systematically suppressed as a result of state laws and local policies that limit access to personnel files. That prosecutors and police officers form a cohesive prosecutorial team. The prosecutor has a means to discharge the government's Brady responsibility if he or she chooses. Officer choice. Prosecutor. <laughs> Prosecutor choice. You ready? Your right to confront. Your right to cross-examine. Your right to challenge evidence. Your right to know the character of those coming against you. Your right to a fair trial. That's why I'm talking about the Brady List. That's why I'm giving it to you in pieces. That's why I'm giving you the Supreme Brady list. That's why I'm talking about bad cops. I'm not on their team. Their team has nothing to do with me. I'm giving you dates. I'm giving you inc incidents. I'm weapon night. I'm giving you bullets for your gun. I'm not sending you on the battlefield without ammo. And I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a teehee. I'm and I'm 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 gonna start wrapping this up. I make sure I get I make sure every time you go out on the battlefield that your weapons are adequate and you have a means of survival. I've given you my cash app, my PayPal. Mazel. YouTube has a join the channel button. Has this thing called thanks. Spotify has it. Anchor has it. iHeartRadio has it. Support the channel. The reciprocation is not there, but I do it anyway. I 
I put up the video why I stopped helping. And it's because I got tired of doing the impossible for the unworthy, the ungrateful. I'm sending you out with everything and means to defend yourself. And very, very, very few reciprocated. And it's funny because I'll get the oh brother when I I'm finna I'm finna sinner. I'm finna sinner sinner de. finna never came. And it's funny because those will be the same people that'll contact me multiple times. Can you can you help me? Can I cause I'm finna finna finna. Understand this isn't forever. And it's going to get to a point to where this information is going to come to a halt. That's not a finna. It's coming. I'm going to help you keep weaponizing until I don't. Then you're going to have to pay for it with time, just like I did. Or you're going to have to pay for it. Or... You're going to have to put your life in the hands of someone else and not your own. And hope they do a tenth of what I'm talking about. Because just like whenever I told you, a friend of mine paid an attorney. That attorney lied to him about a police request or a Brady request or a Brady disclosure. Until that person was then found to be lying and shown that she was lying and then she went to threatening him because someone else could hold her accountable the accountability part of the Brady list is exponential in your defense the prosecutor becomes responsible because they choose to use the police officer's information to charge you if they continue. Those where prosecutors cannot access the personnel files, the prosecutor must choose to go with your motion to dismiss. But you also have to write that motion properly. You also most must submit that motion to dismiss properly. Because everything you do has a process and a timing. If you do it too early, nothing happens. If you do it too late, you might be screwed. Everything you do is about timing. Those where prosecutors cannot access the files because the records of the misconduct are accessible to the public and thus not consider Brady material. That will be things such as the Supreme Brady list. Prosecutor doesn't have to give you that because you can go to my page. Supreme Brady list, officers such and such. It's now a public record. You got an incident date. Now you can be specific on that request for those incidents. Those where prosecutors have access to the files and use the access to search for and disclose misconduct information. And that's generally going to be information that they don't feel is misconduct because somebody has overlooked it and said it was okay. They were not punished for it. And those where prosecutors have access to the file but do not put systems in place to search for or disclose the information because most of that deals with the context of this isn't law that we're talking about we're not talking about actual finding of guilt and innocence we're not talking about the truth that's why you never hear me speaking about it because the truth is not anywhere in a courtroom you want the truth go to church it might be there 
Because right now, there's a war on the truth. There's a war on information. We're in the information age, and you know what? People will fight you over information. You know why they fight you over the information? Because they don't want you to change their mind. They'd rather stay blissfully ignorant. That's why I give you the red pill information. Blissful ignorance is not something that we indulge in here. And to finish this off, because like I said, I've gone a little longer than I planned on to, but I want to give you this because this is just a part. This is a start. This is the beginning of the Brady information. Because making police misconduct more accessible will benefit only defendants, but also society, ensuring fair trials and forcing dishonest cops off the jobs. I'm going to repeat that because the purpose of the Supreme Brady List is to do this. Make police misconduct more accessible and will benefit only defendants. Not the prosecutorial team. But also, it'll benefit society. Because it'll ensure fairer trials and force dishonest cops off the job. It will ensure fairer trials. It would ensure fairer trials and force dishonest cops off the job. Force dishonest, you know those few bad ones that nobody wants to get rid of? That's $50 million a year being spent on of taxpayer money, $50 million a year to keep these bad officers. It would force these bad officers off the force and would also free up $50 million a year across the board. Just think about the allocation of that. Because you're going to preach witnesses, even cops. Their police report is signed on oath and can be impeachable testimony. Because it's also what the prosecutor is using to prosecute you. So that's all I got for today. Don't forget, support the podcast, support the channel, and... Use the information you're given. And as usual, <laughs> please forgive me. It's my passion talking. Supreme, I'm out.